here. <laughs> Can you introduce yourself to those who haven't seen you on TV? Um, I'm Guy Willison. Uh, every sort of all my motorbike mates call me Skid, uh, which Henry Cole started when we were really young. We've known each other a long time. And uh, my company's 5.4. Um, and uh, this was one of the first models I did. One of the first Honda models. So you're working as an official Honda builder? Uh, kind of. I mean, I had this harebrained idea. I saw this bike when it was launched. Uh, I saw the standard bike and I thought, you know, I love big air-cooled Japanese fours. Uh, I knew this was going to be the last one made uh, and I thought I want to build it like I'd have had it back in the day in the 80s. Uh, it was the perfect bike to do. To cut a long story short, basically I knocked on Honda's door, said I want to do a limited edition of 54 bikes. Uh, can we do it? And then a very convoluted route, uh, eventually, through a lot of hard work, I got that to happen. So you built 54 of them? No, because Honda uh, ran out of bikes. So I've only actually built 45. If you got it from Honda, it had to be red, blue and pearl white. Um, uh, and you, you couldn't get it in any other colour from Honda. It had to be in their race colours. Um, so, I mean, here's proof of the pudding. I, I wanted mine a different colour. Because I built 45 in red, I thought, I'm not having a red one, I want to be different from everyone else. So this is yours, this is this not is one mine. of the 54. This is not one this of the 54. One. The, the bike is identical, well, look, because it's mine, there's various little bits, it's been tweaked around the edges. But the bodywork and the general stance of it is exactly the same as the production ones, the bodywork's the same. So I painted it a different colour, I did the seat differently, uh, I put stripes on it uh, where the other ones haven't got any. I wanted mine candy orange because I love candy paint. It's got laser etch logos on the exhaust, it's got the company logo in the number board, it's got my Dennis the Menace on it, uh, it's got different bars and mirrors. So look, it is tailored for me, I build custom bikes, so I couldn't have just a standard red, blue and white one. Um, but it's basically the same bike, yeah. Can we roll back now? Yeah and find out how come, if, if I will come to Honda and yeah. I will ask to build 54 bikes, yeah. they will open the door and say, all my friends go went, and build whenever oh, you want, not oh, for us. Uh, all my friends went, you won't even get an interview. All my bike building mates went, guy, you won't even get an interview. So I said, well, I'm going to give it a go. So you just went for it? Uh, yeah, look, I had the vision of the bike in my head, which helps. I saw the standard one, I thought I can do this to mm. Uh, and I want to do limited edition with. But Honda. did you came with the with the sketches or no? Just I don't do sketches. I don't it? draw. It's in my head. So, how did you how how you sold yourself to Honda? Um, well, luckily, I'd done the Norton Street. So you did uh, it for Norton. Uh, I did a Norton. A yeah. Oh, okay. It's a beautiful bike. So yes. I took the Norton Commando nine six one, restyled it, same as this. Took a standard bike, restyled it, and it was in the TV series. So there was ten minutes each week on me building this special and the, the agreement was we take it back to Norton and show them. Well we took it back to Norton and showed them and Stuart Gardner, who we won't go into detail about, he's a bit infamous, uh, he loved it and said could they build 50. So Norton built 50 of the one I built. So That's by accident I had a track record of taking a standard bike doing something special with it, and, and then it production. became a limited edition, yes. which Norton built. I didn't build those, uh, I built the prototype, uh, and then they put it in production. When I knocked on Honda's door, I said, you know the 1100 RS, I want to take that, and I said to them, I want to do it a bit like the Norton, single seat, little nose cowling, titanium exhaust, I want to do that to the 1100. And I managed to sort out a deal where they loaned me a bike, they didn't give me a bike, they loaned me a bike, uh, I built a prototype, took me six months to build it and took it back to them and I always said if I bring it back and you don't like it, I'll walk away. So I built a special, took it back, they loved it and then we did a deal for me to build 54. So differently from Norton, yeah. all 54, you're building every bike, 45 so far, you built yeah. yourself. Now Honda give me a brand new yeah. bike, I take and off all the bits I don't want on it. By yourself alone? Yes, in my workshop. All and then, yeah, and I designed, so I, I had the design from doing the prototype, but that's the easy part because uh, when you do a prototype, it's one off. So this is all aluminium, it's not plastic mm. or, or carbon fibre. So 
uh, the uh, prototype was all handmade aluminium, but then you've got to replicate it 50 times. That's where the difficulty begins because you've got to get tooling because these are for Honda. They all have to be identical mm -hmm. to the tolerances Honda want, which is tricky. Um, so then you've got to get the tooling made to make the aluminium. Uh, I've got to find a painter who will paint them all beautifully without a flaw in them. You've got to find someone to do the leather seats. You've got race fit to make the exhausts. So you've got to replicate it 50 times. And I do all that on my own. So I'm not making the exhaust. I'm not making the bodywork. I designed it uh, and got the prototype made. Some, I, I didn't make the prototype. Uh, my mate Simon Parker in Bournemouth, he made the prototype, the one-off. Um, but then I went to a company uh, that fabricate on a larger scale and got them to make the tailpiece and fairings. Then I take it to Arnie who paints it. So I always do a dry build first, which is without it painted or anything. Check it fits beautifully, then it comes off and it goes for paint, leather, uh, and all the, uh, the exhaust just come from race fit and they're beautiful, they fit, you never have to file anything, they go straight on. There's a lot of time productionizing when you're going to build 50. That takes a long time, costs a lot of money, but then you're set to build the 50. Don't get me wrong, it's still a lot of work. I've had no time off. I've had no holiday since I've been doing this in three years. I've not had a day off. As we'll see in the workshop in a minute, I'm now doing the thousands. Uh, I finished one about an hour before you got here. So you're doing 54 thousands now? Uh, 54 of them, yeah, yeah. I'm mm. building number, well, in there is number 14, but I've done some bespoke ones because some guys want them in different colors. Uh, a friend, Johnny, had a blue, black and gold one. Um, someone took one uh, last week, a black, candy blue and white one. So, and they can't be part of the Honda because Honda, they're all red. Mm. So if they want a funky colour, someone can come and see me and I'll build them one in a funky colour, but it won't be one of the 54. Oh, so... Yeah, the but they get a zero, zero badge. So if ever you see a 5-4 with a zero, zero, it means there's it's bespoke, there's something special about it. Okay. I wouldn't say odd, I'd say special. Special, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a better word, isn't it? This one, because uh, the, the number of them is in the badge. So mine, I put my initials in that. It's mm. not got a number, it's just got GW in it. And Honda allows you to sign the bikes as well? Uh, on the new model, none of these were signed. But what gave me the idea to sign them, I was building the 1100s and number 54, the last one, because they weren't built in order. And one chap, he wanted the last one, supposedly, number 54. And he got me to paint on it, lucky last, because it's the last one of the series. He asked me if I'd sign it. So I signed it and then I posted it on Facebook. I built number 54 and signed it for him. And then uh, a friend of mine, Keith, who's got a standard one of these, phoned me up and went, could you put your signature on mine? So he became a friend. I didn't know him before he bought his bike, but because he only lives 11 miles away, uh, he's become a friend and he pops in for a cup of tea quite often on his 5.4. Um, so over winter, I took his tailpiece off and got it painted for him with a signature. And I thought that'd be quite nice for the new model. So when I took the prototype of the 1000 to Honda, same way, I'll build a bike, you have a look at it. If you like it, we'll do 54. If you don't, I'll walk away. Um, I put a signature on it, but when, you, you know, you have to order them through Honda. I can't sell you a 5.4. You have to go to Honda to buy them, unless it's a bespoke one. Yeah, that's a question I wanted to ask. Like, how, how people buy them? They go to Honda website and order... Well, 1100 now, you can only get them through me. You, there are no new bikes around. That's why they ran out of bikes. They were Euro 4 compliant. And then after January, they've got to be Euro 5. So Honda had to stop them. They ran out of bikes and couldn't bring any more in because mm. they're not Euro 5. So, but what I can do, if someone owns, goes and buys a really lovely second-hand one in good condition, I can convert it well, to one of these. already, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's already pre-owned because they're already in the country. Mm. So, so someone could still have one of these if they come to me, but when they were in production, you had to go to Honda. I couldn't sell you one when they were in mm. production. I want to take everyone to your workshop yeah. and to show where the magic happens. Yeah. Because when I came in... It's not I an impressive surprised. place. No, no, it is impressive. No, it's way, not. It's, it's you, a show. You have some, some tools that I haven't even seen at the workshop I'm working at.
Honda CB1100, the 50th anniversary of CB750. It is because luckily uh, the year that these started rolling out was the 50th anniversary of the original 750 that was launched in 1969. Uh, and the marketing guys at Honda said, oh, we could do this as a homage to the original bike. And uh, so in a lot of their sort of blurb they had on the internet and brochures and stuff, it said it was the 70, uh, sorry, the 50th anniversary bike. So this is the last production of CB750 kind of like development because that's 1100 engine. Yeah. But it looks like Jonesy. It, it looks like the bike I built. Like yeah, when yeah, I look well, at the engine, it's so similar and the exhaust. But that's why I picked it to do because when I saw the standard bike, Honda had taken a lot of care. You know, this engine is designed to look like the seven, one of the older model 750s. It's the last in the line of air-cooled bikes that was really brought into the UK of big Japanese fours. And that's why I wanted to do a homage to what I used to ride back in the 80s. I used to buy, you know, the Honda 900s and 750s and do this to them for me and my mates. So th this is my rose-tinted spectacles back to sort of 1982 when I was building these back in the day. And I just wanted to bring it out now on a modern bike with, you know, this has got great tires on it, modern sports rubber. I mean, we'd have given anything for a bike that went and handled like this in 1982. Um, and it was my rose-tinted spectacle sort of trip to, back to that time with a modern bike. Can you tell us what have you done with it? I'll just grab the camera to make yep. sure that I catch everything you're showing. Yeah. So how you tweaked the original last 750, which is 1100, to make it yours? Um, so from the standard bike, look, this is the standard tank. What I try and do is keep what's good and, and change what I don't like. and. Kind of, the kind of vibe I go for is if it doesn't make it go, it's not on there. So I don't have plastic covers and like even things like they have little plastic caps that go in these bolts. Well, uh, you know, they're a penny each and I hate them. So those go in the bin so you can see the actual bolt. Um, but look, so it's the standard tank repainted. Um, this tailpiece is hand rolled aluminium. Uh, obviously there's a seat base on there with the um, leather seat. Uh, and what I wanted to do, I've had a lot of Rickmans and stuff like that in the past where to get the tailpiece off uh, and put it back on, well, it takes you an hour. There's spacers and bolts and whereas this, I wanted it to come off with the key. So I'll, I'll try it. I, this hasn't been off for years. This has just been parked here. Um, so, and you can see underneath. So that just comes off with the key. And look, it's all handmade aluminium uh, and the seat base is bolted to the tailpiece. Um, it took me forever to work this out, uh, to get it so you think it's going to be really simple to make that come off with a key, but trust me, it isn't. And to get it to the build quality that Honda won. So all these are handmade. When I build them, when they're bare aluminium, I bolt them to the bike, shim them, check they fit, because you don't want to be messing with this once it's painted. This paintwork's expensive. So I do what's called a dry build. I build the bike in entirety. Then it comes apart and it goes in for paint and detailing. So look, it's an aluminium tailpiece, Alcantara and leather seat with red stitching. Uh, I'm kind of known for this diamond pattern. I love this diamond pattern. It's on most things I do. It's on the new one. Um, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So it's got the diamond stitch, double edge here. That's a kind of traditional thing with me. Um, now, another thing that it had to have, you know, it's got the standard exhaust, which are quiet because they have to be. Uh, these exhausts are technically for track use only. So when it was supplied, it came with the standard ones on and it's up to the owner to fit these. So these are beautiful titanium uh, four into two because I like the balanced look of an exhaust each side. So these are the titanium uh, race fits. They're beautifully made. I think race fit are fantastic. These are the standard Honda footrests. They're powder coated either silver or black. This is based on a black model with a black swinging arm forks and engine covers. You could order it from a silver one uh, if you wanted. So, and the ratio was about 50% of each. So half of them were based on a silver bike and half of them based on a black one. Uh, people have always said to me, which do you prefer, Guy? And it depends on my mood. If I'm feeling a hooligan, I like the black one. If I'm going classic bike racing, I like the silver one. 
It's got an aluminium nose cone fairing. That took ages to work out. Some people don't like this. Some of my mates have said I'd have it without, which, I mean, you can take it off. It's not been butchered in any way. It's got beautiful billet mounts made by Fast Tech. So this is hand rolled aluminium, and then obviously it's painted. It's got the standard indicators on it. Um, ooh, nearly knocked my tea over. Um, the rear indicators are chopped. This has a big grab rail round the back. Uh, obviously, and the mug guard comes down, and the rear light's down here somewhere. Uh, so I chop off the rear mug guard, um, and I keep the front bit because it's got all the clips and everything for all the wiring, so it's neat and tidy, and it looks, when this is off, it looks like Honda built it. But these indicators normally are down here on a lug. I cut that off, and then I mount these where the grab rail mounts, and I shorten them by an inch, so otherwise they stick out too far. So these rubbers have been cut and linished, and serve the mounts, and the actual lugs on the frame have been doctored as well. So you couldn't put this back to standard with the grab rail now and the standard mug guard. It's got to more or less stay like that. Renthal bars, these are super bike ultra low for that sort of, because uh, I'm getting old, I don't like clip-ons. Uh, it gives me backache. So I kind of like this hooligan flat tracker bar. I love the bend of these rentals. They're super bike bars. Um, so those went on. Uh, it's got LSL levers just because I think they feel lovely and they're lovely to ride with, uh, with the little anodised red adjusters. And it's got Italian Tomaselli racing grips and they have the rubber piece in them there mm. that fits in your hands so that if you're on a bumpy road it stays there, you don't have to grip too madly to sort of hang on to that and control mm. it. And it's just a styling thing, so that's style and function. Um, so you do not sacrifice with function? No, to me... Um, obviously, I've built bikes in the past when I was kind of, if you like, learning. Not when I was learning, but when I was younger. And they looked fantastic, but after 50 miles, I just wanted to get off them. I've kind of, now, whatever I build, it's got to be totally rideable. If you can't ride the wheels off it, it's not right. So that's what this, you can get on this bike now and ride it to the south of France, just stopping for coffee and petrol along the way. You know. I've got to the south of France in 11 hours. Um, so, just, it's got to ride. It's got to be beautiful to ride, and also, obviously, I want it to look beautiful. I, I, I used to go to Le Mans and watch Honda race, and I remember this as the works racing colours, so that's why it went on here, because it's kind of, it's tipping its hat towards an old endurance race, so that they used to race bikes very similar to this at Le Mans when they were based on a bike you could buy in the showroom before it got too expensive and mad. Because Honda quit the production of them mm. because of their mission and everything that's yeah. happening in the world at the moment, if somebody has a CB1100, can that person buy parts from you? Because Honda only made 45, I can still build 10 of these. If someone's got a 1100 RS, I could build it into that for them. Uh, it takes a while. If, if you want it next week, forget it. Uh, because it's taken me four months to get the body, because everyone's busy, and I'm only getting one done. When they were in production and I was getting four sets a month, it's different. But because they're not in production, as long as someone's patient, you know, they can order one of these off me and I'll build it for them, yeah. And that now is the one you can go to a Honda, you can now walk into a Honda dealer today and go and order one of those. So that this one, this one is only the one, one bike available. This one is the prototype, which led to that one. But if you've got a 2018 to 2020, you can either bring it to me and I'll build it into one of these in any color you want. It doesn't have to be red. Or you can buy the bits off the website and build it yourself. So you could just buy the fairing or you could, uh, I do the leather seats. If you send me your seat, I'll get it covered like that. And it's also got, the leather bum pad with the 5.4 logo in, because this is just rubber on the standard bike, but we cover them in leather. Uh, it's got the race fit pipe. So all the bits that make this bike, you can buy off 5.4. You can just buy the tail tidy and get rid of this big ugly thing that's down here. Mm. Um, so all the composite parts of this bike, you can get via 5.4. Or if you don't want to build it yourself, bring me a standard bike. And I've done a few, I've done one in, uh, sapphire blue. One went out last week which was diamond black, metallic black um, with the blue and white. It looked fantastic. And now you're doing a new 1000. Yes, so this one 
Um, this one you can order from Honda. This, these are for Honda. I finished this one uh, about an hour before you arrived. Where is that box of um, development of the tail tie day? Right, I'll get a standard one, hang on. I'll, I'll get a production one and then I'll can... You've hidden all the magic away. So, um, Guy will show us uh, somewhere how, the, how the magic happens here in the workshop with all uh, them tools. So here is a, this is a tail tidy. Uh, the, obviously these are for the production, but and this fits the, the current production model and it fits the old one, the 18 mm -hmm. to 20. It's exactly the same. They didn't change that on the bike. So this is a standard production tail tidy. So that goes inside the tailpiece there and the light mounts on it there. So that's one of those and there's a bracket for the reflector. Mm. Um, it's got that bracket, so if you want a standard number plate and be legal, that fits there perfectly. If you want a little 7x5, that reflector bolts there and you can have a little one. You don't have to get mm. a hacksaw out and start chopping mm. it around it. You can, so that is a standard production um, tail tidy. I've got a box somewhere, it's down here, I'll get it. So, I find this embarrassing. I don't normally show all this stuff because I'm so old school and old fashioned. Um, that's so what look, we like. So there is a, that's, that's a brand new one to go on a bike. Um, so look, it starts out, it, there's a flat plate, uh, then it's been bent, uh, then, it, then there's one with cutouts. Um, that's the first one. You can tell that's an old one because it's got round holes mm. and that's a, sort of like a bit Heath Robinson, but that was on a bike and, and checking it out. And then I decided, don't like the round holes, it looks a bit amateur. And as they are being laser cut, you can put a nice shape in very easily. So that looks a lot more professional than that. Mm. Um, but just to see how much it was gonna weigh. And uh, so you can see, so here's the lineage. I'll try and get them in the right order. Here we go. Look, you, you, you can see the development that goes into them. Uh, there's another one. Uh, that, I think that one was too wide to go in. That fitted, but it was a nightmare to fit. It took a long time. So that's just all the, so you can see the various developments to end up with that. And that's just powder coated at the end. So, so you can see how much work goes into this. And I won't sell thousands of these. I'll probably sell 50 of these. So you've got to cover all this cost and time and pay your workshop rent and put food on the table while you're doing all these. Mm. And then you'll only, I'll only sell a few. And then also uh, the guys that make my fairings, which are carbon fiber on the new model, these, these are aluminium, but those are carbon fiber. He was in here and I was messing around with these and he was dropping fairings off. And he went, oh God, why don't I do you some in uh, carbon fiber? So this is, I only got three of these made. That's the last one I've got. It's a, this is a carbon fiber version of that. Um, it's exactly the same. I love carbon fibre and it's light as well. Yeah, it weighs nothing. It's like a paper. And because they know the Formula One guys, th this, this has been yeah. stress tested to check it won't crack. Mm. Uh, so I've got one of those left if anyone wants one. This is the other thing, when I do these for Honda, I want them to look like Honda could have built them. Rather than do a really funky custom one-off, that isn't what I do with Honda. It's, you've got to replicate it 50 times so the quality's got to be there. but. I want it to look uber cool, but kind of Honda could have built it, rather than doing a, a one-off that's obviously not built by Honda. I look at that and think, that's how Honda should have built it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not wacky. It, is, it could still be a production bike. Can you show us that cardboard fairing? Yes. Please. Um, the CAD design guys laugh at me, because they can all sit at a laptop and do this stuff, but then if you do that, it never looks the same as you imagine it in your head. So what I do is I build it in cardboard. So this is, so look, it's a bit moth-eaten now. It's been on the shelf for years. So I actually bolted this to a bike and rode it. You to, rode it? Yeah, with, with that, that on. And it started raining and I thought, I better get back to the workshop or I'm going to lose two months' work. It took me two months in the evening, in the middle of winter, it was freezing in here, um, to make this just gradually cutting and adding bits. It's got about five layers in places. So. But the thing is, when you put that on, that is that fairy. It's going mm. over the top of the other one. When, it, when that other one's not on there, it fits perfectly and you bolt it on in exactly the same place. So I took that to my mate Mark and said, can you do me a CAD design of this? He did the CAD design. It spat that one out of the machine in it 3D printed it. And I didn't quite, 
see this bit here, it's really small. Mm. Um, and the production ones are, are bigger. So I, I, added, I added a bit on. And this, this is the bit I added on to make that winglet come back a little bit further. This is the production version of that. That's a 3D printed. And there are subtle differences because I looked at that and thought I can improve it. And that's the beauty of CAD design. You just tell it to change it, the coordinate from there to there. So look, it's got a longer side bit on it here, which is, that is that bit there. I, I just added that much more on. So lots happening here and definitely will have a reason to come back. Definitely. definitely. You're always welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it cold here in winter? I've got a heater now. Oh, that's good. So it's over there, my little I jet don't like, engine. I don't like when it's really, really cold. No, I don't either. Now I'm getting older. It never used to bother me. When I was dispatch riding, I used to ride all year, freezing cold, snow, rain, didn't bother me. You used to be a dispatch rider? Yeah. That's how that's you That's an got old into joke because everyone always laughs because I bore everyone about it. So yeah, I used to dispatch. I did a million miles in eight years. You did one million miles in, in eight, eight years. years? I did 125,000 miles a year for eight years. Get through a lot of bikes doing that many mileage. Um, but... Uh, no, I don't think you can do it on one bike. I had a BMW, I did 350,000 miles on it. So, and it was on the original engine as well. I used to change the oil in it every weekend, religiously. So what bikes are the most reliable then? You did one million miles, you know which one you can... Uh, I used R80 BMWs a lot because they were... You've got to remember, this is 40 years ago. Mm. So it's not like... With oh modern yeah, they've like, everything. Yeah, so I used to do yeah. uh, a lot on BMWs, uh, a lot on Kawasaki 550s because they were... You couldn't really blow them up, even like redlining them every gear. And they used to get so hot around London in summer. Um, so yeah, Kawasaki 550s and mostly that uh, BMW 800 shaft drive. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.